It's a sport on the rise, but many people still don't know what it's all about. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths. In today's installment, we're counting down the top 5 myths about mixed martial arts. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be breaking down some of the common misconceptions that surround the sport of MMA and its athletes. We, we, we're just so fascinated by fighting and who the tough... If Mike Tyson walked in here right now, you'd all shit your pants. Number 5. MMA Fighters Are Rich The guys at the bank want to take my house away. This is an understandable misconception, but one that is quickly debunked when you realize that the UFC isn't the NBA, MLB, NHL, or the NFL when it comes to salary. The NFL, which has the lowest average player salary of the Big Four, still comes in at a whopping 1.9 to 2.1 million per player. The average yearly salary for a UFC fighter? A comparatively measly $42,000. Sure, that's still a decent paycheck, but not after you factor in the gym fees, taxes, travel expenses, and, oh yeah, the fact that their job consists of them getting pummeled inside a cage for five rounds. Ten grand. He made 10 grand for that fight? Number four, you should never have sex before a fight. This is the night before the fight though, you know, and you're not supposed to have sex the night before a fight. This sports adage has been circulating for decades, so much so that even the great Muhammad Ali allegedly refused to have sex for up to six weeks before a fight. However, our good friends over at Science have discovered that having sex before a fight actually improves your chances of success. It's the uh, opposite for women. If you have sex, it raises your testosterone. Let us explain. You see, copulation increases your testosterone levels, with loads of sex accounting for an overall increase in aggression. What you think about when the it would appear that making the beast with two backs pre-fight isn't so bad after all. So fighters, make love before you go out and make war in the cage. Number three, MMA is just human cockfighting. Welcome to human cockfighting, man. This is as real as it gets. Mixed martial arts is not for everyone, but not liking the sport isn't a reason to dismiss it as mindless. When the UFC was getting started back in the 90s, former Arizona senator and one-time presidential candidate John McCain publicly called the sport human cockfighting. Two men pounding on each other inside a cage clearly evoked a certain image from McCain, but MMA is much more than that. Firstly, the fighters aren't forced to fight, they're paid. Second, cockfighting typically involves one of the cocks dying, whereas MMA fighters don't fight to the death. To call MMA human cockfighting is a derogatory and ill-informed label. Unsurprisingly, McCain later did a 180 on the sport. Number two, without Dana White, MMA wouldn't exist. I'm Dana White from the UFC. You're not Howie Mandel? Professional sports will always be bigger than just one person. While Dana White's contribution to the sport of MMA can't be understated, to say it wouldn't exist without him is a stretch. As UFC president, White completely revitalized the sport, introducing it to a larger audience and turning it into the multi-billion dollar industry we know today. I called my partner, Lorenzo, he was in Miami at the time, and uh, I said, I think we can buy the UFC. I think these guys are in trouble and are going out of business. However, around the same time that White purchased the UFC, a number of other mixed martial arts organizations already existed in various places across the globe. In fact, the Pride Fighting Championship in Japan was drawing crowds of over 90,000 people back in 2002. So, despite popular belief, Dana White doesn't own MMA. Number one, MMA is more dangerous than boxing. MMA and boxing are simply two different beasts, but the reality is, all combat sports are dangerous. Boxing requires fighters to punch each other in the head, face and body for up to 12 rounds. MMA fights involve various fighting styles, many of which focus on grappling and on-the-ground wrestling, thus potentially limiting the amount of headshots. Additionally, most MMA fights end in submission or go to decision, which means the fighters aren't being knocked unconscious. While the early days of UFC were considerably more vicious, the sport now does a fantastic job of limiting the risk of injury every time someone steps in the cage, within reason. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.